evil Michael Ealy got this movie trending on Twitter with the trailer, but will he be able to sell actual tickets? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of The Perfect Guy. Do you want to come with me to my parents for the fourth? I have these two front row tickets to the Giants game, and I was wondering if you'd go with me. Shining bright like a diamond, beautiful like diamonds in the sky. Would you mind if I take a picture of this car? Maybe ask my boyfriend when he gets out. It was like a switch went off. You know I never hurt you, right? Do I? Leah, open the door! Yes, when the trailer for The Perfect Guy debuted, it actually managed to trend on Twitter for most of the day, which had to both make Michael Ealy feel good and kind of bad. See, Ely has been a working actor in Hollywood for almost 15 years, yet he just can't find that one breakout role that makes him a star. Sure, he's picked up fans here and there as a supporting player in films like the Barbershop movies, Miracle at St. Anna, Underworld Awakening, and romantic comedies like the Think Like a Man movies, and also on recent TV shows like Almost Human and The Following, where he gave evil Michael Ely a test run. But when fans talk about casting a role like Jon Stewart, Cyborg, or a black James Bond, it's always Idris Elba, Idris Elba, Idris Elba. When are people going to start throwing Michael Ealy's name into the mix? Speaking of Elba, he played a similar role to Ealy's here last year with No Good Deed and got himself a number one debut at the box office. And what do you know, now he's the villain in the new Star Trek movie. So surely Ely is hoping for a similar boost, that is if everyone who tweeted about the trailer goes to see the movie. Come on, Michael Ely fans! It's not enough just to tweet. You've also got to purchase. The good news is, is that with Sanaa Lathan and Morris Chestnut not working quite as much as Ely, this movie rests squarely on his shoulders, so if it does end up doing well at the box office, he's almost certain to get most of the credit. Or is he? As it seems, Sony feels that the real selling point here is Lathan's breasts, at least according to this poster. So let's see if this is the perfect opportunity for Michael Ely. So does the perfect guy reinvent the stalker movie, pushing the boundaries of not just filmmaking, but how we see romantic relationships today? I was going to say, of course not, but then when I was writing out my notes for this review, I realized that the movie is kind of innovative, at least in two ways. Now, the first way has to do with Sanaa Lathan's main character, the type of on-the-ball, really well-put-together career woman who just can't get her personal life in order that we see discussed so often in the press today. So that makes this movie very timely and something that I think a lot of women will be able to relate to. Also, fascinatingly, uh, when you think back to the most famous stalker movie of all time, still to this day, Fatal Attraction, when that film was released, it was criticized by some people for seeming to vilify the career woman. So isn't it interesting to see how far we've come, not just as a society, but how the power dynamics in the movie-going audience have shifted, that here they're able to flip the script, where the independent career woman is now the victim. Now, this is also interesting and innovative uh, from the casting, because this is a script that's colorblind and the casting is colorblind. Uh, they happen to have cast uh, three black actors for the three leads, uh, but they never comment on that, which makes this, one of, makes this one of those movies where you would not refer to it as a quote-unquote black film, which I think is great. I think it's really important as we continue to try and diversify the content that Hollywood offers that we have movies like this. For instance, I was disappointed recently in Z for Zachariah, where they um, changed the ethnicity of Chiwetel Ejiofor's character, that his character ended up referencing that in a fit of anger, that he was the only black guy uh, and the other two characters were white. And it was kind of like I felt a little bit of a letdown because I was like, either go there fully or just stay away from it and, you know, try and have a truly diverse film that, you know, isn't aware of it because isn't that ultimately the ideal. Uh, but they were not able to have such self-control, but they do here, which is really great. Uh, also, recently, I reviewed the trailer for Jake Gyllenhaal's Demolition, where he plays this wealthy guy whose wife dies, and then he has to try and find himself. Uh, and someone in the comments said, you know, I'm so sick and tired of the fact that every time they have a movie like this, the character's white. Well, that BTT viewer would be very happy to know, and maybe some of you will as well, that in this movie you have very affluent characters who are examining their lives, and they're all black, and there's never any discussion of it. 
Uh, but while this movie itself is very progressive, I have to say that when I went to see this movie last night, they didn't have any press screenings for this for all media, uh, so I went to a regular showing, and my three, uh, the three of us, my two friends and I, were the only white people in an entirely sold out showing. Uh, so again, that's a little disappointing. We're seeing a lot of diversification in the audience when it comes to religious films and bios like Straight Outta Compton, but it seems for this type of movie, at least you know, the theater I attended, or at least the showing that I attended, we're not quite there yet. So I would be interested to know when you, if you've seen The Perfect Guy, what was the demographic makeup of your theater. But my friends and I had a fantastic time. Everybody in the theater had a fantastic time. This is a really fun movie. It's a guilty pleasure. It's the kind of movie you see opening weekend with a crowd that's really excited. They're going to yell at the screen. Everyone's, you can just feel the energy and excitement uh, for the movie when you go in. It's a little bit like going to see, you know, uh, some of these chick flick movies like uh, The Fault in Our Stars. Uh, you know, although I have to be honest, there was no shouting at the screen uh, during that movie. It would have benefited from it perhaps a little bit. There was squealing with when Ansel Elgort came on, uh, but a movie like this, you want to have that fun interactive experience. Or I think it's the kind of movie that would be, if you don't see it opening weekend, it'd be a great, again, guilty pleasure at home, either by yourself late at night or when you have some friends over or you're on like a long plane ride. That's where this movie is going to really deliver. And Hollywood, you know, Fatal Attraction is in a class uh, uh, by itself. More on that in a moment. But there have been a lot of these kind of stalker movies in Hollywood. Uh, I have a list here. No Good Deed. Uh, the, I mentioned that in the open with Idris Elba. But also The Crush, Fear, The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. And The Perfect Guy, I think, totally fits in with that group. Very proudly. Really well-made, fun B-stalker B movies. And I think the reason that Fatal Attraction rose above, I mean, that's an Academy Award nominated movie, is because not only because of the caliber of talent involved, a little bit more highbrow, uh, not better in terms of, you know, their ability, but just, in, you know, they're more prestige talent at that point in their careers than the talent involved here. But also, Fatal Attraction, very uh, upfrontly discussed infidelity, something that hadn't really been explored in the mainstream before, especially with such horrible repercussions. I mean, Glenn Close likes to go around telling uh, the, st uh, the story of how people will still come up to her and say, or at least, you know, after that movie was made or a couple years after, you saved my marriage. I don't know if it saves a marriage that the only reason someone isn't cheating on their spouse is because they're terrified they're going to be uh, harassed by whoever they have an affair with, but I guess a saved marriage is a saved marriage. What takeaways are there from uh, The Perfect Guy? Well, I guess never turn off your weirdo radar because what I liked about Michael Ely's performance is that he seemed really weird from the get-go. He just seemed too on, too much like he was trying to play the part of the perfect guy. And he was way too intense. He had the crazy guy stare from day one, like as soon as she met him. Uh, you know, there's like there's like the, the sexy eye, like I'm giving you the eye, like I really like you. Every woman uh, or anyone who's ever flirted knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but... He was giving the I'm crazy and a little bit of a psychopath uh, eye. So uh, I, I, it's too bad that he never did that in front of any of her friends. Or the, Although I think they wanted to believe too. I think all of them, uh, at least Sanaa Lathan's character in particular, was having such a bad time with her personal life that when a fantasy was presented to her, even if, you know, it wasn't that well constructed or, you know, it had obvious holes, she just wanted to believe really badly. It's kind of like, and you've seen it in the trailer, where Michael Ely's like to her dad wins him over with like tickets to the ball game. It's kind of the same situation. You know, Michael Ely like shiny, like, you know, shiny keys to a baby. And so you don't pay attention to what's going on in the other hand, which is terrifying. But it was a scary movie. It was a lot of fun. And I think everybody did a great job. All the performances were really good. Uh, both Sanaa Lathan and Michael Ely executive produced this movie. And I think they got a really good vehicle for both of them, uh, both of them. As for the rest of the cast, uh, Holt McCallany, I had to write his name down because nobody knows this guy's name. When you see him, you're like, oh yeah, that guy. Uh, but he was really good. He plays a police detective in the movie, and at first you think he's just going to be an unhelpful jerk. But then as the movie progresses, you're like, oh, he's doing the best he can within the confines of the law. And then uh, uh, later on, he get, it gets really interesting with him. And then sadly, Morris Chestnut had the most thankless role in the movie because he's just his character was very one note and just was basically there to be a constant disappointment to Sanaa Lathan. Uh, however, I have to say, he seemed to have the most fans in the audience, at least at the screening I attended because he got the most shout outs and he didn't just get shout outs he got shout outs by name they were like you go morris and so i was like hmm, you think morris chestnut would be doing better considering the fans he seems to have uh in this audience he has a tv show you know uh, interestingly enough uh, i saw an ad for a, a tv show he has on fox so i guess he is getting work so good for him but again 
fun movie, total, totally a B movie, great sets, great fashions. Uh, it's just a good scare and a lot of fun to watch. And so don't expect anything to be remade except for the, the two areas I touched upon. But again, you know, it's, it's not supposed to remake anything. It's just supposed to provide you with a good time. And it provided me with a good time. Uh, so that's my review of The Perfect Guy. Uh, if you've seen the film, write your thoughts down below. And if you haven't, why haven't you seen it? And uh, it would be interesting to discuss, to discuss from that perspective as well. So look forward to continuing the conversation with you down below. And you can check out some other episodes right now.